Well, I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to sharing today's word with you. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Docker, and I'm privileged to bring the word of God and to uplift and encourage you in your walk with faith. As Christians, Jesus commands us to love one another. He also tells us that we as Christians are known by our love. And so the word is entitled, Love Your Neighbor as Yourself. And in it, you're going to discover what God has intended for us to do when it comes to reaching out to the lost and the hurting. You know, Billy Graham is uh, in his 94th year of his life and uh, many years and decades has he been preaching the love of Jesus Christ to the nations of the world, seeing millions, probably countless souls coming into the kingdom of God. Well, we're one of the churches that is partnering with the Billy Graham Association to be a part of the My Hope outreach uh, that is affecting America in 2013 and in Canada. And so as the year progresses, you'll learn more about that. But this sermon that you'll hear today is to help us as Christians to develop a heart and a burden for the lost. So I encourage you to stay tuned and, and get a close ear to what God is saying through His Spirit to you today about reaching out to the lost. And when it's done, I'll come back and share some more things with you. The sermon is entitled, Love Your Neighbor as Yourself. And uh, the reason the Lord is having me to share this word today before Wednesday night is to prepare your heart for what he's wanting to do, not only in this region, but also in this nation and in Canada. This is a very pivotal year spiritually. It is a very crucial year and that there needs to be a turning around of the people of God's hearts from the things of this world and self-love back to the things of God and to our first love, Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Amen. And so the Lord said I needed to preach a sermon that would stir up our hearts through the Word of God so that we understand the gravity and the importance of what God is doing here in America. Uh, Billy Graham Association has done a lot of research, and they've done a lot of work. You know, they've been around, uh, how many years have they been in ministry? Seventy? A long time. And so they know evangel uh, evangelism. And so um, God really burdened Billy Graham's heart that before he leaves this earth, he needed to reach his home uh, country, America, and that's exactly what they're doing. So in celebration of his 95th birthday uh, in November, we're doing the uh, My Hope with Billy Graham. So far, they have had 10,000 churches uh, agree to be, uh, participate in this outreach to, uh, in America. Now, I have said this before, and I'll say it again. There are, you have these flyers. If you do not have one, please get one from the usher before you leave. Everybody can participate in this. And Wednesday night, you'll find out more about it. But every one of us knows somebody that's lost or either backslidden that needs Jesus Christ in their life and needs to find direction for their lives. Amen? Amen. Begin writing names of people that are lost and are backslidden on these and begin praying. I'm not telling you to go out there and preach to them yet. Just start praying. Because if we will pray, God will hear. And when God hears, he will move. Can I get a witness? Can we at least do that much? Huh? All right. So if we'll start praying right now and believe in God, just write these names down. Just, just putting those names down and, and bringing them before God, God will remember that and he will move in that situation because you're sowing into that person's life. And so we're looking forward to uh, what God is going to do uh, in this nation in November 2013. They have said at the Billy Graham Association that this is the largest evan uh, evangelistic outreach America has seen. 10,000 churches, I believe that's going to far exceed that because as the year goes through, they're going to step up their media blitz so that uh, more and more uh, pastors and church leaders will catch wind of what my hope is about and how crucial it is for every American to participate in it that, that knows Jesus Christ and believes in him as the Savior of the world that uh, more and more churches are going to get involved. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's look here in Romans 5. I want to give you a stat. And this stat, whenever I got ready to uh, study Friday morning, 
uh, after praying, the Lord told me, he says, before you even go to the Word, call Billy Graham Association and ask them one question. And whenever I got the, the statistic from this question, I knew where God was taking us today. So uh, let's look here in Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what people are needing in their lives. They need to have that peace with God through Jesus, right? Yes. Through whom also, through Christ, we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out, or King James says, has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So how's the love of God distributed among the saints of God? Through the Holy Spirit, right? He gives us the ability to love the unlovable. How many knows you've got to yield to the Holy Spirit if He's going to use you? For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the who? The ungodly. That was us ones, wasn't it? For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, still what? Christ died for us. Much more than having been uh, now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Can I get an amen there? Through Jesus Christ. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now, uh, when I called the representative there at uh, Billy Graham Association, I said, do y'all have enough information from the pastors and the leaders of churches that you have heard back from as to how many people per church, what percentage of church members is actually participating as Matthews in this outreach to see the soul of America changed. And she says, yes, we have that information. It's 10% of each congregation. So if you had a congregation of 100, 10 people are participating in it actively. To reach out to the lost, to reach out to the hurting, to the destitute. Ten percent across the board. All types of denominations uh, are participating in this outreach. So this shows, see, see God don't, he doesn't miss a lick. He, he's going to have so much information come out of this outreach besides souls uh, being one to the kingdom of God and the kingdom being expanded. Uh, there are going to be so much uh, research that's going to come out of this, so much uh, information that's going to help us as pastors know how bad a job we are doing. I'm looking forward to it because I had rather hear some bad numbers now than stand before Christ and have him pull out a whip. As followers of Christ, we must guard our hearts against self-love and allow the Holy Spirit to give us a heart of compassion for the lost and the hurting. We have got to guard our hearts, Christians, against that, that fleshly thing that comes upon us and can overtake us called self-love to where we no longer have a compassion for the, the fetuses in wombs, we no longer have compassion for the drug addict down there and the, under the, the overpass that we drive by every day at work and never even think about where their soul is going to spend eternity. 
We need to have compassion for that streetwalker that does not know her identity is, is really found in Christ and not in bed with a... With a We have got to give our hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit so that he can fill our hearts with love that we may have compassion for the lost and the hurting. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. So we've got to abide in him so that he can do it through us. It's easy to allow self-love to consume all of our time and strength so that we have nothing left to offer in our service to the Lord. Can I get a witness or an old man? It's easy to do that, isn't it? To fall into that trap where we let self-love, it's all about me, consume all my time and all my strength. God, I got a family. You gave me a family. God, you gave me this. God, you gave me that. God, if you didn't want me to use that boat, why did you give it to me? Right? But he does not want the blessings to become God's. I will have no other gods before me. Look there in Galatians 5, please. So this is going to be fun. Galatians 5, 14. <clears throat> you ever tried to keep the law? Doesn't work, does it? But look what verse 14 says. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you can get to the place as a Christian where you love your neighbor as yourself, you are fulfilling the whole law. I didn't say that. God said that through the writer Paul, right? But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. He's not talking to heathen here. He's talking to Christians. I say then, walk in the Spirit. Do what? Walk in the Spirit. Walk yielded to the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's the hardest revelation for a lot of Christians to get. If I walk in the Spirit, I don't have to worry about fulfilling the lust of the flesh because I won't have a desire to do it. I just ignore walking in the Spirit because I'd rather walk in the lust of the flesh. Let's be honest. For the flesh lusts or wars against the Spirit and the, war, the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what it says, isn't it? He's talking to Christians here. The people who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. He's got love first thing. The Spirit is going to produce love in Christians, is he not? Then joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Wow, you can do that all day long and not break a law. And those who are Christ, in other words, those who belong to him, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Oh, I'm born again. Yeah, how's that working out in your daily life? Uh, you need to quit meddling. Notice it's meddling when you get real with people. But it's preaching as long as you don't touch on them. Oh, this is fun. Love is the fruit of the Spirit, and it has to be developed just like any other fruit. How did Jesus say we'll, we'll bear fruit in John 15? Abide in me, and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. 
You cannot bear fruit as a Christian and not abide in him. In other words, you walk in the flesh, you do the things of the flesh, you desire the flesh, you do not desire the things of God, you don't have compassion for the things of God, then you won't bear fruit. You will not have the fruit listed here that is of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You will not have those. Have you ever seen a fruitless Christian? Yeah, we won't go there. So, fruit is developed by practicing your faith and keeping the Word of God on a daily basis. Practicing your faith and keeping the Word of God on a daily basis produces the fruit of the Spirit. Paul tells us as children of God, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this stuff will be added to you. So if we truly, truly love the Lord, then we will place his will first. Turn with me to Luke 9. 51. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him, Jesus, to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him. In other words, the Samaritans did not receive the disciples that were getting ready, preparing for Jesus to come. And said, no, we're not going to allow him in our town. Uh, because his face was set for, uh, as though he were going for a journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to uh, command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? We'll do that. Where's their love? Huh? They were so much trying to accomplish what Jesus said that they lost their love. They didn't have love for the ones that Jesus was called to save. But he turned and what? He rebuked them and said, do you, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. Now it happened as they journeyed uh, on the road that some said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury the dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus wanted him to put the things of the kingdom before his own dead father, right? Well, that seems awful rude. Which is more important, seeing a soul saved or burying a dead body? Oh, well, burying a dead body in this generation, right? How dare you ask me to go preach when my daddy's dead? And another said, Lord, I will follow you. Let me go first and bid farewell or bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. These potential disciples of Christ were so filled with self-love that they didn't have time to serve Jesus and he told them that if you put your hands to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. See, it's one thing to be saved. Is this okay? It's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to step out of your comfort zone and serve God in his kingdom. When you get out of that place of complacency and all about me and my four and no more, when you step out of that and you start serving God, you're under a different system. Where much is given, much is required. That's why he required more of them. I require more of leaders. Why? They have a responsibility. If they want the glory up here, they're going to have to walk a tighter rope. But if you're going to sit out there in the pew, you can do a lot of things. Doesn't make it right. Now, someone asked me this past week, 
How did the body of Christ and our nation get to the place of spiritual de decay that we find ourselves living with today? The answer is very simple. We have left our first love. When Jesus called us, he didn't just save us, but he wants us to be his representatives to the world. We are commanded to be salt and light and to live for him. And when we're not salt and when we're not light and we don't live for him, then there is not going to be a true representation of his word and of his heart in the earth. It's up to us. It falls on our shoulders, does it not? And the way we live... The world is going to look at it. And when you confess Christ, you're go people are going to automatically put their eyes on you, see how you're doing. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Unless we as individuals strive to wake up every day and seek after the Lord, then we will begin to drift into self-love and follow our own path and ignore God's path and plan that he's already set for us to follow. Is that not true? Every day we need to wake up and say, Lord, what do you have for me to do? Your will be done, not my will be done. I'm here to serve you. If you don't do that, self-love will start pulling you off course. It'll happen automatically. Take a coal out of the, the fire and put it on the hearth and watch that, that thing. It'll start growing cold and dark. Self-love comes upon us gradually and slowly the more away from the fire we get. You will know that you have drifted away from the heart of God for your life when you begin to return to your old habits and desires. Is that not true? When we pull back, when something gets our attention, our heart's attention, other than Christ and we start pulling back, we will start realizing our old habits are coming back. Our old friends are coming back. Our old bondages are returning. That's what happens when, people, when Christians pull away from Christ, when they're seduced by self-love to say, you know what? I'm going to pull back. I talked to a pastor, to, uh, no, a minister this week, who is friends with another minister that had reached a pinnacle in his uh, walk, I mean uh, ministry. He had gotten on one of the most famous Christian television broadcasts as an employee, and he fell in with the wrong crowd at that, at that broadcasting network. And the people he surrounded himself with did not have the things of God on their heart. And they justified immorality, alcoholism, consumption of alcohol. He got intoxicated, got into the Beamer, and was driving down the road at a high rate of speed and hit an elderly man and killed him. It just it destroyed him that he had taken the life of a gentleman. And he says... I justified all of these things until they were right in my eyes. I'm telling you guys, the Spirit of God didn't give me this to fill Sunday morning. He's given me this stuff to warn us to wake up. We're headed down a path of self-love to self-destruction. And if God does not wake us up or if some, if some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers don't get a backbone and start preaching the truth and shake some people out of their slumber, they are headed to destruction. And this nation is headed to destruction. The Holy Spirit instructed me to sound an alarm to his people for you to stir yourselves up and to shake off apathy that is creeping into the church. Well, how do you know apathy is creeping into the church when only 10% of the church cares about the lost? Apathy has taken us over, and you can justify your laziness all you want to. It is what it is. Well, I didn't come to get beat up today. I'm not beating you up. I'm waking you up. Awake to righteousness. Amen? Amen. Now, 
There is a generation that is living without Christ who will die in their sins and spend eternity in torment while the church indulges itself in the pleasures of God's blessings and ignoring the cries of the world for help. God has blessed us to reach out to others. Turn with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 3. <clears throat> Now as he sat, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Isn't it amazing how the Word of God can just bring out some things that maybe we were not paying close attention to and just through the power of the Holy Spirit get convicted about being lax in our walk of faith or maybe sharing our love with the, of, of God with a lost person or maybe a backslidden Christian. You know, we're to be salt and light. Jesus commands us to let our love and our light shine forth before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. We're excited to be partnering with Billy Graham Association as one of thousands of churches in America and Canada for this outreach for lost souls through the My Hope with Billy Graham project. If you would like to know more about that, go on our website, whcnorth.org, and click on the link for My Hope with Billy Graham. And as you do that, you can also check out other ministry resources we have. We're also transcribing many of our sermons now, and you can go on and download the PDF file and read all about what God is saying to this church and to you through this ministry. Would you prayerfully consider maybe becoming a partner or supporting this ministry so that we can get this voice out to more nations and more people and more lost souls so that like you, they can see the light of Jesus Christ shining in a dark place. Lord, we thank you for our brothers and our sisters. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen them with might in the inner man. Give them opportunities to reach out to the lost this week, this month, and even this year as we partner with Billy Graham and his team, Lord. Give us opportunities to reach out to the lost and the hurting and to share the love of Jesus Christ with them. And through our submission, may the Holy Spirit convict and bring in the lost souls into the kingdom of God. We thank you for this and we ask your blessings upon our brothers and sisters today in Jesus' name. Hey, it's been great to be with you. I look forward to being with you again next Sunday or next week. May God richly bless you is my prayer. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, please log on to our website at whcnorth.org or call 706-374-6175 during our regular business hours. Can't seem to find time to get into God's Word? Need an encouraging word at the right moment? Pastor Ace's daily devotions are available on our website at whcnorth.org. Use the Devotions tab and simply add your email address in the box provided or download the app for your smartphone. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512.